By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim. Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we have reached the final match. Yes, the finals of the Raging Bull series, finally. If you'd like to see the previous games of this tournament, the first five rounds, the quarterfinal and the semifinals, and then now the finals. So if you haven't seen the other matches, you can click on the playlist that's appearing on the screen right now. And let's go to the actual finals. And we have on the left side, we have Nick. He's from the Netherlands. Groningen to be precise and he's playing the deck and we've seen him earlier in his quarter final match beat another the deck player and he is playing against um, Megu and Megu is from Italy he's Mr. Fish Liver Oil or one of the misters I should say is one of the people organizing it and he's playing with death guy a uh, dead guy ale on steroids and he actually lost in the semifinals against Leo but Leo had to catch a plane Therefore, he has reached the finals. So this is going to be an interesting matchup, kind of like the control elements of the deck taking on the um, aggression of Dead Guy Ill on steroids and, and it's called on steroids because of that blue splash. Well, let's, um, let's go to game number one and see what's going to happen in these finals. Game number one is about to start here, the first game of the finals. And in the middle of the table, we see the prize, the Raging Bull there, signed by all the uh, contenders of this tournament. I believe it was 40 plus. And there in the middle, you see a really nice extra prize. There's the artist proof of the Raging Bull. And the artist himself has made a drawing on the back. It's pretty cool. It refers to Amsterdam, to bicycles, and there's a Raging Bull there in the middle really really nice and let's go to the game so there's a tundra there for nick he's sitting on the left playing with the deck and on the right is megu playing with dead guy ill on steroids and there he's kind of changing there he's playing underground c into a mox jet and then taking an extra turn there with a the time walk and ooh, an underworld dream so it's a pretty good start for megu here and let's see what nick can do in itself the underworld dreams is not too dangerous at this point but before you know it it's slowly kind of choose away at you and especially when you're playing the deck which is a control kind of matchup um, games tend to take long and there's a dark ritual into a mind twist I'm kind of expecting a counter spell although he doesn't have two blue mana here there is a disenchant on the underworld dreams but you know all the cards here are away or gone and I think what Mego did really well here is taking taking a chance seeing that Nick didn't have two um, blue mana there and there's a library of Alexandria for Nick and that's pretty harsh after that mind twist to draw a library of Alexandria there and there is a Juzam hitting the tables so that's a 5-5 five, five here Megu taking damage going to 17 and he's attacking here with 5 so Nick is going to 14 it's not looking good for Nick um, he kind of needs a miracle here to get back in the game. And he'll probably have to chum block with his uh, factory pretty soon, which is not great. He's not finding any land. He's stuck. And that's the thing, you cannot play your control game if your opponent is that fast. And here, this is ex exactly what he does. But there's a disenchant. So this was a very quick game number one with, I would say, an incredible draw there from Megu. Um, so let, let's let the players sideboard and we'll get back to this in game number two. Game number two is about to start and here the players are still shuffling up here. And there we see them cutting the decks and now they're drawing the cards. So that was just an incredible start there from uh, Megu on that first game that does mean that Nick gets to start which is a great advantage always but especially when you're playing with counter spells so hopefully you can now quickly find it to blue mana but look at the opening of Nick there's no blue mana there's a basic plane and a mox jet interesting opening and he's playing a tundra here so still no counter spell options but Megu cannot take advantage of this you would kind of hope for him a dark ritual or something else an ivory tower so he's actually he's not playing out any lands here so it's looking look seems to be an unlucky draw here again for Nick 
which is not great when you're down one game. And there's a dark ritual into the Jews M Jin, and there's a quick um, sword to Plausius as a response. So that's 25 life for Megu. And there's the Mishra's factory here. And there's the Mishra's factory for Megu. Having four mana, so I wonder if there's another creature coming. And there's a time walk. Pretty nice. Again, Nick is missing two blue mana to counter. There is a black one. There is another dark ritual. Paying a life, tapping another one. Is there a Sengir Vampire coming? Because he's got five mana now. Still thinking. Oh, interesting. He's playing a Time Twister. And this is an interesting choice. Because Nick, it kind of felt like Nick was on a dead end there. On the other hand, Megu still has two mana open. So if he gets a Dark Ritual and a Mind Twist, obviously that's something that, that he's hoping for, I think. But even with the two mana now open, if he gets a, um, a Juzam Jin, he can play it out immediately. So he has a lot of options here. And there he goes. And what is in those seven cards? And Hypnotic Spectre. That's a problem Nick will have to deal with. I assume he has something or he would be very unlucky. He's now holding eight cards. And there's a Mox Pearl. Looking at his hand. What can he do? And he is playing the Chaos Orb and he's gonna flip, obviously, on the Hypnotic Spectre. You don't want that Hypnotic to, uh, to be able to damage you and you lose some cards. And there's a flip. And they hit the card, so... The Hippie's gone. Although it's still on the battlefield. Okay, it's not gone. So there wasn't a, a full rotation, I guess. And that's why it missed target. It's always difficult, these flips, when you look back. Um, even when you put it in slow-mo, because you don't see where they start flipping. So they should actually go and take the, the right camera angle. Um, and here's Megu taking an extra turn. And it's not looking good for Nick again. You know, missing that flip... Uh, because I assume it didn't rotate fully, because that's what needs to happen with an orb flip. Um, may even cost him the game here. And it gets even worse now. He's going in for another attack. And adding the factory there as well. Why not? Taking four damage, so he's going down to 13. And there goes the Sarah Angel, and that would have been quite nice to play out, actually. Um, and he's sacking his Mox Jet there and keeping his Mox Pearl around, using the mana. And there's nothing he can do, it seems, so it's, it's not looking good here for Nick. He's on 13, Megu is on 22, and he's leading... Zero to one. Another four damage coming in. There is a Define Offering there over the uh, Mistress Factory. So that's one problem solved, but the bigger problem is that constant losing of cards because of the uh, Hypnotic Spectre. And, and that's the biggest problem here. He has to solve that to stabilize. So hopefully now he can play like a Sarah Angel. But it's not coming. He lost to Sarah earlier, as we could see. But that's kind of what he needs here. There's a disenchant there. And he loses the Tranquility. Interesting. So he boarded in a Tranquility against probably the Underworld Dreams. And there's a disenchant. But a counterspell on the disenchant. So there's two damage there. Went pretty quickly. But Nick decided to attack with the factory. And eventually there's it's taken care of. So... There's a land for Nick. It's not looking good again. He's on 7. Megu is on 20. And I'm just going to say it again. I think that missed flip was decisive. And it's interesting now when you, when you think about it. We've seen 
uh, quite a lot of missed, well, a lot. We've seen two missed flips in the in the top eight. Uh, you don't see that often, so it's interesting. And here Nick is going to one life, and I, I, I cannot see him coming back from this anymore. And there is even uh, the um, arm of the... Armageddon, that's the word I'm looking for. Uh, well, Megu, you've done it. You've won the uh, first edition of the Raging Bull series. So congratulations, you're the winner. And uh, well, we're happy to um, to see you coming back to Amsterdam to defend your title next year, because I'm sure there's going to be a next year. It was a big success, it was a great tournament. So congratulations uh, to Megu for his 0-2 uh, victory against the deck player. I feel that Nick was very, very unlucky here. Um, but because the rest of the day I've seen him play uh, great magic and actually in the Swiss rounds I don't believe he lost any game there and I'm talking about Nick uh, but Megu man congratulations with your dead guy ill on steroids deck well done well done and thank you all for watching all these episodes um, showcasing the Raging Bull series in Amsterdam. If you'd like to see more old school magic, you can click on the links that are appearing right now on the screen. For now, thank you for watching and see you next time. <laughs>